Hey, what's going on? It's the Deja Vu Show, WBLS, and we are in the building with the legendary one, Mr. LL Cool J. What's going on? How are you? All good. Look, he, he came in with the vibe, with the energy. I'm here to make dreams come to reality. This Bring true. it. He's Bring it. Yeah. <laughs> but you've been doing this for years, making dreams reality, and now you're bringing a new, what is it, frequency of real creative energy? That is correct. That's the acronym for the force, the That's album. That's for the yeah. force. Yeah. All right, so last time I talked with you, you were just, I think, getting into the studio with Q-Tip. Yeah. Working on this. Yeah. Talk to me about what's transpired when you started the album, where we are now, and what brought it along. Yeah, so um, I had... Uh, initially I was working on, I was in the studio working with Dr. Dre and mm -hmm. we had did like 30 or 40 songs. And then I felt like the stuff I was writing, the music he gave me, the soundscape was unbelievable, but mm -hmm. I felt like my writing wasn't up to par um, relative to the music that Dre was giving me. So we took a little break mm -hmm. during that break. I had a dream and Fife dog from a tribe called quest came in me in a dream. And he's like, yo, that new album you, you make him is gonna be is gonna be dope. And I'm like, yeah, but he made a funny face. And that face told me, nah, he was he was being sarcastic. Uh -huh. So, you know, when I woke up, I you know, I knew I couldn't call Fife, but something just kept weighing on me. I said, let me call Q Tip up. So I called Tip up. I'm like, yo, Tip, what up? He's like, what's up, big bro? I'm like, yo, I wanna make an album. He's like, well, what kind of album you wanna make? I said, you know, pickle juice, hot sauce, pimentos in the potato salad, crispy skin. <laughs> I just want the craziest joint. And he's mm -hmm. like, what you want to do? I said, let's do it, man. So we went in the studio, and um, it took us a, almost two years to complete it from start to finish. Why so long? In, a, in just, technology, you have all this stuff. Why, what was the craft? Yeah, well, like? technology doesn't give you inspiration. Though. Mm. Technology is just a way to a way to get execute. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, you know, it may get you to you know Cali fast on the plane, but you got to want to go to Cali. Come on. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, we just... Kept working and working, and I was inspired, and, you know, it feel good. And then during the pandemic, I got to travel around, run around, and um, discover some other things, you know what I'm saying? Yes, because when I was talking to you, I think you had popped up at a mall in Queens or something, and you oh. were, you, you, I think you were just or walking around. Yeah, were, yeah. Yeah, I was anonymously, I was anonymously walking all over the, all over New York City. And, yes. Um, going on a subway, going on a public, plane, you know, trains, going on a bus, going everywhere. And, you know, you come to realize that, you can't you can't really write songs for people if you can't relate to people, right. and and you, what happens is you don't. A lot of times people don't realize that they're separated. You know they've been separated and they're isolated and living in a bubble. They they think they you know because they know what the new clothes are that you know they're connected to the people, but it right. doesn't work that way. Yeah. And so by me, you know, just being around people and and just it, it just inspired me in a different way. And I think that the album took on that that kind of energy. You know, what I'm yes. saying? that real creative energy. That real creative energy, of course, and that's how we got the force. Real, creative real. Energy. Now, what's the difference in the real creative energy versus the synthetic? Creative um, energy? I think it's true inspiration that comes from the soul, whether it's fiction, fact, fantasy, or a combination thereof, as opposed to just creating something that sonically sounds like what's going on. It's mm. a difference. Come on. Mm -hmm. All yeah. right, so now let's walk through, because we're going to do like a, a, a takeover on the show. I like that. You're going to take over and tell us all about the album okay. for us. All right, all right. so I want to go, we're going to go back and forth, actually, because I want to play some new stuff, and then I want to dip into some some classics and all of that. So give me one off of the album that we should jump off with. It starts with uh, Spirit of Cyrus, which is Snoop Dogg, but is there one that you sonically want to jump into first? Well, I mean, you know, there are a lot of different there are a lot of different records. See, the thing about the record is, though, the, the album is that if we're going to go into it, it, it can't be about, like, trying to play songs because I think they work on the radio. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It has to be about, like, the actual music itself and the real, you know, the real energy around the, the, the actual, you know, the, the, the album. So, right. to me, it's like, but I guess... I think I would play that one. I would play the Spirit of Cyrus, not okay. because necessarily because it's a radio record, but just because I think it sets up the record and sets up the album the right way. And I think it's a cool way to do it. There was a um, there was a guy named Christopher Dorner, and um, he was an LAPD cop, and he went he went rogue out in LA, and um, you know, he had unalived a lot of people and mm -hmm. touched up a whole bunch of people, and um. I got a call from high level law enforcement out there because I was doing a show at the time and it was like, yo, you need to stay up, stay, you know, stay inside. Don't come. And I'm like, what well, I gotta stay inside. What'd I do? And they said, nah, this guy we have a manhunt for, he looks just like you. 
and they're not necessarily looking to take him alive. And it was like a, a running joke on the internet that this guy looks like me and all that. And people was kind of thinking it was funny. But then in the meantime, I'm getting calls like stay wow, inside. Wow, wow. So I went down a rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. And um, when I went down a rabbit hole, I found out that, you know, he was, he felt like there was a line between him being black, him being a cop. That was an issue. There was this black blue issue. And then I started looking at what was going on in the country and it ultimately looked like a metaphor for a lot of the things that it seemed like were happening in the country in general. Yeah. And so I went down that rabbit hole and wrote the song, The Spirit of Cyrus. And um, How'd then you I, link up with Snoop? Um, I just felt like Snoop would be perfect sonically on the chorus um, because, you know, when I thought about Murder Was a Case, it just has a certain energy to yeah. it that felt like Snoop would sound good on it. Because anybody I put on the record, you know, any guests, they're not there because they're famous or because they're well-known or because I'm trying to reach an audience. They're there because sonically it made sense. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So whether I pick, you know, Nas or Eminem or Snoop or whoever, it's because, yo, this person sounds, or even Saweetie, it sounds like they should be on the record. You know what I'm saying? Like, sonically. So Snoop just fit perfect on this joint. All right, well, let's do it. Spirit of Cyrus, LL yeah. Cool J, Snoop Dogg. Yeah. We're doing it on WBLS. Let's get it. Now, LL, hmm. we do something on our show called Knowledge is Power, where we throw back to people who made history. You have made history several times, I mean, getting different awards and everything, but back <laughs> when you first started, right. you were like the, the hit maker for this label that we know as Def Jam. Talk to us about what that was like when you were first getting in the game and making your songs. So, um, I mean, the way that worked was, you know, Rick Rubin had produced a song called It's Yours, mm -hmm. and it was on Def Jam Productions. The label was actually Street Time Party, Party Time Streetwise, mm -hmm. and, uh, but it was the Def Jam logo. And I saw that, that logo, and I saw that phone number, and I, you know, sent Rick a number. I mean, a tape, you know, to his address and everything. <clears throat> Ad Rock from the Beastie Boys heard it. This is before there was a label. He heard it, and, um, you know, they got together and, and liked it. And I ended up getting with Rick, and uh, I went to his NYU dormitory, and uh, we made a, a song called Catch This Break. Mm -hmm. We went across town that same day, played it for Russell Simmons. Russell thought it was the same old thing. We needed to do something better. So me and Rick went back in the studio and made a joint called I Need a Beat, um, which was based on my original demo. And when we made that, um, they, they formed Def Jam. I was the flagship artist, and the label was born. And, um, you know... We went through all of that process and, uh, you know, ended up doing like two singles independently wow. on Def Jam. And then we ended up going to Columbia initially and getting uh, a distribution deal at Columbia. I don't think I knew that. Was that was, during that same time period or was that much later? No, no, it was doing It was very definitely it was before my first album. My first album got distribution because of my first two singles. You know what I'm saying? It was yeah, 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 yeah. But I didn't know that oh, yeah. you had your own distribution deal through that. No, 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 no. It was independent. Def Jam was independent. Got you. And then they teamed up with And then Columbia. they went to Columbia mm -hmm. and got a distribution deal through Columbia. And then the and yeah. then the rest, as they say, is history. It really is. And you know, it was um it was an amazing, amazing journey, you know, just seeing it unfold. You know what I'm saying? Yes, because um, you came on the scene, you were young, hungry, doing yeah, all this stuff. Yeah. And you you basically spearheaded this album, I mean, um, this label. Well, it is no basically. I did. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, hey, it ain't no basically, basically. boo. <laughs> you know what I mean? What do you mean basically? I definitely did. <laughs> you better yeah. call it LL. Yeah. But that's crazy. Like, I mean, yeah. do you sit back and think about when you started and to where you are now, your origins, to how you've just been able to maintain and continually uh, giving us the creative energy? You know what? Um... I just truly believe anything is possible. Yeah. And um, as a little kid walking around, you know, I remember, like, I just believe, you know what I'm saying? And I'm having fun. See, the thing that people, I think, sometimes forget about, the part that they forget about is having fun. And they take it a little too seriously. So there's a reason why I didn't toot my horn that much about that, because I was just having a good time. Right. I was just happy to be on. Happy to have a deal. Happy to be a part of this thing. You know what I'm saying? Um... I even owned a piece of the label at one point. Yep. I sold it early. I was crazy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was having. I was just happy to be on and having a good time. Right. And it, you know, I had no idea that it was going to turn into all that it turned into. Although, when I need a beat, I did say I predict this jammer hit the highest plateau in the world of music, paparazzi, wealth of fame, the total propulsion of my name. I said that, but did I know that? 
Not really. You know what I'm saying? I was just talking. But and no, just, but you put that stuff out in the atmosphere. Oh, well, baby. Come yeah, on. Well, it was definitely out there. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was out there for real. So, you know, it was good. It feels good. You know what I'm saying? We're having a good time with it. And now, that's why it's so fun to be able to put the new record out on Def Jam on the 40th anniversary in year 40. You know what I'm saying? Like, that feels amazing. You know what I'm saying? That feels amazing. Yeah. Let's throw it back to I Need to Be. LL Cool J's doing a takeover right now on this yeah. Deja Vu show. Let's do it. Yo, I don't think I realized it was the 40th and the 40th, and we just did the 50th and 50th. Oh, yeah. This is, this is crazy. Yeah. This is crazy. Yeah, because when, you know, when the hip-hop first started, you know, th those first 10 years I was developing, you know what I'm saying, as an artist, right? Mm. So by the time I got on, by the time the record came out, came out in 84, I was ready. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, I, you know, I, I discovered it very early, you know what I'm saying? Like, When did you start writing your rhymes? You, you fell in love with writing, the hearing. I started writing it around maybe 10 or 11 or 12, somewhere uh -huh. in there, but I started... Becoming a fan around eight, maybe seven, but around eight years old. Mm -hmm. So, you know, all those years I was, you know, for eight years I was kind of vibing and learning and writing and studying and going to parties, rocking block parties. And what did you used to say at the block parties? Give me something. Take take us back. You don't want to hear all that. Man. I want to hear something. Can I don't even, I half remember it. <laughs> I have, I mean, you know, like like Mysterious Aura, Yes Arounds, Cool J, that gives the other MCs a touch of dismay, uh, Blow out a candle from a mile away, affect rhyme at the rhyme with no delay. He you talked know? about he don't remember. He said you know he don't man? remember. I remember that part. I bet you do. <laughs> yeah, I do. I bet you do. Who were some of the ones you were looking up to um, when you were first starting out? Oh, man. You know, um, Treacherous 3, Crash Crew, Fearless 4. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, all the, all of the guys, you know, Zulu Nation, Bambada, yeah. Flash, Furious 5. Um, you know, all of the, the artists, you know, Sequence, Blondie. Of course. You know, um, you know all of them. Even Lady B from Philly. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Shouts Lady B. Um, you know, all of them. And uh, just, you know, looking up to those artists. And then you get on and, you know. And then you come in and you make your way. It's my turn. My turn. My Step turn. Up, clear out the dance floor. I'm up in here. Yeah, don't clear the dance floor, but I'm up in here. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, all right, so now, so that was back then. Let's right. flash forward now. You yeah. said 40th this, 40th anniversary of that. Yeah. Now we have Force. Give me another joint from the album. And you got so many people who are collaborating with you on this one. Yeah. Um, give us another track that we need to blast out. Um, well, I, you know. I mean, you know what? Let's Actually, play. we're gonna walk through the whole album. Let's, let's do walk. It. Let's walk through it. But okay, if you want to walk through the album, then I think a song that would be good to play, just just one that popped in my head that'll be, I think, cool for the for the audience is Black Code Sweet. You know what I'm saying? With Sona Joy Better. Okay, you know tell me saying? about that one. Um, basically, what I wanted to do was take a journey from you know, from the from the from the street, my from in the, from the city to all the way to you know, the you know. Sub Sahara, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, and mm -hmm. just go to all the way to Africa and just take people on that journey. You so know what I'm saying? Does that vibe with it? Well, it does, but you know, it, it's you got to hear it to understand it. You know what I'm saying? It's about that food. It's about the the life. It's about the culture. It's not you know just. It's not a stunt. Not just the beat. Yeah, and Sona Joy Better, you know, plays this unbelievable instrument called the kora, which when I say it sounds like, oh, that might be maybe that's going to be musical and and sound different, but when you hear it, you like, oh, okay. You understand why Q-Tip is Q-Tip and why, you know, she is who she is mm -hmm. in terms of an artist. She was the first female over, she comes from a famous family, of, you know, and um, one of the first females to play this particular instrument. And the way it sounds sonically is crazy. You know what I'm saying? So Black Coast Sweet. Yeah, check it out. All right, we you know got it saying? right now. Black yeah. Coast Sweet, LL Cool J yeah. from that new album, The Force. Yeah. All right, so LL. Mm. Mm. Talk to me, because I know you have a plethora of... Um, oh, plethora. <laughs> a hell of a, a word. <laughs> a plethora <laughs> of experiences. What's it like when you are on stage now in comparison to back then? Uh, more to do. What do you mean? I mean, you know, it's one thing when you got one single in all the time in the world. It's another thing when you got 100 singles. Oh, um, yeah. You know, you're like, so you got more work to do. Right. It's more work. Who? What's the one that you love to perform? What's your favorite one to perform? I know they're all your babies, but when the crowd gets crazy, see. But that, what you're saying makes sense coming from you saying that. But you have to remember it depends on the audience oh. because you know you might be in one state or one country, and this particular song is the one that they oh, love. That's true. That's true. Or you be you see what I'm saying? So it's not as much as I would like to say. Oh, I like to perform this one or that one. It's really about the audience. You know mm. what I'm saying? Um, doing it could be fun, you know, lounge it could be fun, mama can be fun, rock the bells could be it depends on, you know, the audience, you know what I'm saying? All right. It really does. All right, well let's 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 throw it back. Give okay. Me, give me one from back in the day that we're gonna throw back right now. All right, let's um 
Let's give them doing it. You, know you want to do it and do it and well? Yeah, yeah. It's one of my favorites. LL Cool J. Let's ladies love Cool J. Still in here licking the lips, ladies. You know he's doing it well. Uh-huh. Well. <laughs> <laughs> You're a mess. You well. are a mess. <laughs> <laughs> it's a takeover on WBLS. We got LL Cool J hanging out with us. The album is Force. Yeah. LL, you have become a force, not just in the music industry, but even in ent- entertainment all over. Talk to us about what made you want to get into steering into the the acting world. So, I mean, the the, the real answer is I just didn't want to limit myself. Mm-hmm. And and the reason, the thing that really pushed me into acting was the first time I went and had a um, meeting to talk about in advance on a new album. And, you know, my man started shifting in his chair from butt cheek <laughs> to butt cheek. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go do something else for a minute. Come on. And we're going to have a different conversation. So I went and decided to do a TV show. So I went and did a TV show, and after that, then we could have a little bit better of a, com- you know, mm-hmm. a better conversation. Mm-hmm. But it really was about not limiting myself and and just wanting to do different things and have different experiences. Like the only reason I um decided to do a drama on TV was just because it represented a new challenge. Because when I when I first came out and I started in music, I had like 10, 10 platinum albums in a row. So I felt like okay, I want to try something else. Right. I guess it was like Mike playing baseball. You know what I mean? I just uh-huh. did a little better. You know what I mean? <laughs> I actually made it to the major league, and I love him. That's my favorite. He's my favorite. Yeah. So I don't want to, you know, that's my guy. That's your you know dude. What I'm that's my dude. But I'm just saying it was like that. It was more like just a new, it said, it, it was just presented a new challenge for me. Mm-hmm. So. Did I, they take you seriously when you first no, got into it? No, of course it? not. Who, who uh, did you have to go like an audition? Of or course. Pitch some things? Talk to us lot, Lots of auditioning. Lots of, you know, I, I mean, I, I auditioned for Jerry Maguire and spilt the water all over the dude's desk. Oh, my god! didn't get the part. I auditioned for a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, um, you know, that comes with the territory. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, if you're not willing to be, to, if you're not willing to be vulnerable and potentially look stupid, you're not going to be successful. Yes. Because That's- that comes with, the, you know, even taking the last shot in the game. You know what I'm saying? You got to be willing to miss the last shot to take the last shot to make the last shot. Right. But if you miss the shot, you could get ridiculed. So if you're a person that's averse to being vulnerable or if you're uncomfortable with, you know, that kind of energy, you know what I'm saying? Being out there then Being rejected, because yeah, I, I hate that, gonna... that. That part of auditioning, good night. Uh, yeah. Hold on, he's bringing out, wait, wait. Hold yeah. on, y'all, let me paint the picture. For those, those of you who are listening, he's taking off the jacket, yeah. got the merch on, the Rock the Bells merch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. see it. Okay, we're going to talk about that in a second. Yeah, when but, okay. does it become merch, that word? You know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it like, used to be what the, the t-shirts like when people put Balenciaga on is that merch <laughs> no mm. Mm. it's not because because what stop trying to trip me up but you're right I'm just thinking you know I hadn't thought about that yeah wait we're gonna get back to that alright we'll okay. right, back to your acting okay Um. what was the first TV show you did was that the in the house um no you mean as an actor as an actor yeah, in the house. In the house. Yeah. And from there, you went back, and after you did that, then did you go back into music, or you went and did more? No, I definitely did a lot of music mm-hmm. after that. You know what I'm saying? Like, countless, yeah, all kinds of hits, yeah. But did you of- feel like, okay, I need to stay over here in the acting lane no, for a no, few minutes? No, no, because it's not about, it's not a departure, it's an expansion. You know what I'm saying? So yes. there's a difference. So it's not like I'm leaving, but there is a different level of commitment that has to be there if you right. want to do music for real. You know what I'm saying? If you want to do it, at a high level every day, you got to be really committed. You can't half, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You can't half do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, th- that's that's the reason why it even took so long for me to come and do this new record is because what I did was, you know, I, I made one experimental record while I was out doing NCIS. And in doing that, that album, I felt like I was disconnected from the people and I, I didn't feel like completely tapped into what I was doing. Yes. And I didn't really like the results. So, but you know what? That's dope that you can say that because a lot of folks won't even say that they didn't even feel connected to it or whatever. They'll blame other things on. Yeah, whatever. yeah, you gotta be self aware, man. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And but that speaks back to what you were saying that people are out of touch. Sometimes you get out of touch. You gotta go and ride the train or go and be amongst the people. Well, you, you know, a lot of times people could be out of touch, and they also could just don't want to. Honestly, they don't like confronting themselves. Mm. A lot of people want to. They just, you know it's much easier to just find someone else to blame than to be honest with yourself. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, they want to, you know, you know, 
They want they want to you know eat a Twinkie and blame what's in the Twinkie for making them fat. That's no, your why, elbow that's bent. Why I gained these Did extra your pounds. elbow bend when you ate that Twinkie? <laughs> like like they don't they forget that part. You know, right. like people forget their their participation in the situation. Right. It's like you know what I mean. Well, you went back, you you reworked and retooled some things. You got with Q Tip um, for yeah. this album for Force. No doubt. Talk to us about some more music. I like the Saturday Night Special. You like that one? That's right. a vibe. You like that one? We can play that one. Let's you want to play, play that? It. What was that like though? When you were uh, doing the video, working with Ross and Fat Joe? I mean, the, the whole vibe with that one was just, you know, always keep your word, always paying back. So it's a, really a song about integrity. It's not about being perfect. Mm-hmm. It's not about being moral, like moral judgment, but it is about discernment and about integrity. And so, you know, always keep your word, always paying back. That applies on the street. That applies if you're trying to pass the bar. That applies in med school. That applies when you're trying to get a promotion. That applies in school. It applies across the board. You know what I'm saying? There's certain principles that always apply, and that's one of them. All right. You know what I'm saying? So that's what the song is really about, basically. Now, the reason I chose those two artists is because – they represent in the minds of people and myself that hustler spirit. Like mm-hmm. when you think about Rick Ross, you think about a guy who's very entrepreneurial. When you think about Joe, you think about a guy who's very entrepreneurial. So I felt because of that, it would get that idea home a little bit more with people and they'd understand, you know what I'm saying? You know, my pain on the song, you know what I mean? <laughs> All right, we got it right now. Let's get it. LL Cool J, Saturday Night Special featuring Rick Ross and Fat Joe. Do it. It's an LL Cool J takeover on the Deja Vu show yeah. with WBLS. LL, the legend, is in the building. Now, we touched on a couple of things earlier. You mentioned something about merch and everything. You have a whole line of things that you're doing, but I love your Rock the Bells movement, taking it mm. not just with merch, but actually with the whole with your whole crew, the people mm. that you are paying back with. Give us insight onto that for folks who don't know. Yeah, Rock the Bells is, is basically just a, a company that I created um, and found it in order to lift up timeless artists and, and lift up artists that have been in hip hop since the beginning to make sure that, you know, I, you know, to, to make it real simple. I just felt like the way rocks artists are treated, the way rock and roll artists are treated, the way country artists are treated was very different from the way I felt hip hop artists were being treated when it comes to having long careers. Right. You know, it was almost like oh, you've been successful for a long time of, oh, you've done this, but and then they get kind of commoditized. Why is that? Why? I and think, I think what, we do that. Why do we do that? I just think we was just trained that way. I don't think anybody's doing it on purpose. Yeah. You know, we just kind of trained to feel like, you know, we have to put you out at the pasture to make room for something else. And it's just, it's just the way our culture was kind of, trained and it has a lot it has its roots and I think a lot a a much deeper conversation Mm -hmm. but I think you know for me it was like yo I could do something about it and instead of you know complaining I decided to start a company give these these founders equity give them jobs have a channel do this thing with Rock the Bells Radio have this whole thing so that they could have lives and it could be great for them you know what I'm saying and then on top of that then turn around and, and make new music that's impacting the culture in a real way to show people that that's possible as well. Right. Because, you know, all of these things require courage, guts, and you got to be willing to take a shot. You know what I'm saying? So having Grandmaster Kaz on the radio, having Roxanne Shantae, having Shot Rock on the radio, you know, um, may he rest in peace, Mr. C, mm-hmm. you know, like all of these different artists, you know, Marky D, rest in peace, like different artists having them, letting them be a part of this thing. I think, you know... That's what we got to do. You know what I'm saying? Don't be, don't talk about it. Be about it, right? That's what it is. You know how you hear people say, I can show you better than I can tell you? Come on. Well, let me show you. Show and prove. You know what I mean? LL Cool J's <laughs> in here. Wait, you know what? Let's play Rock the Bells. Let's play Rock the Bells. Let's get it. Throwback. Let's get it. Hey, it's a takeover. You know LL Cool J's been in the building. LL, what do you do when you're not hustling and working and all that? What's what's chill life looking like for you? <laughs> chill life. <laughs> Come that on. sounds hilarious. No, because I saw you on a cruise before. I saw you. Well, no, you did the Rock the Bells cruise, but I saw you hanging out with Magic and all them yeah. before, too. That looked real chill. That looked chill. What were you doing? Cruising. Chilling. I was cruising. See? That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, but no, cruising. seriously, what do you do? You know what? Fun? Just um, I just like to dream more and do more. You know what I'm saying? Like, I do a lot of dreaming. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, I like to have fun, too, and keep it simple. But when I'm doing nothing, it's nothing. I just want to watch boxing. You okay. know what I'm saying? I just want to watch, who, I just wanna watch somebody get right a lot of a lot of different boxes is great out there. I just want to see somebody get their nose turned all the way around to the back of their head. Oh my and I feel great. Are I you love a, it. Are I you a football guy? I, football's cool. I like football, but I'm, I like boxing more. 
Really? No, boxing's my favorite sport. Yeah, yeah, I like boxing. Do you get into the ring and, and do a little something? I'm not trying can? to get punched in the mouth, period, at all. <laughs> Unless I'm self-defense. Self-defense. I, but I want to watch it all day long. I want to watch dudes just catch it. Oh, my God. I love it, man. I can't I love get it. down with it. I mean, I like the I like the. I love the, the savagery. Around it, I love the savagery. That's the part I can't get with. Yeah, that's what I love it's about it. It's too much. It. That's what I love about it. The but you're savagery. Be relaxing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm relaxing. <laughs> watching this savagery, man. <laughs> this you pure savage mode. A I'm very mercy. relaxed. <laughs> Very relaxed watching these savages go at it, man. Do you have What's to fight science? parties? Absolutely. Sometimes. 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 Absolutely. Okay. We got the wings and all that. Let's get That's it. That's what I'm saying. Absolutely. Ranch or blue cheese? Nah, n- n- neither one. LL. Yeah. I don't really understand that. What do you mean? It disrupts the wings. Come on. Nah, I'm not Wait, with what, that. Are we a hot sauce or what, what are we doing? Depends on the wings. I prefer barbecue. A barbecue wing. Damn but right. you can still dip it in blue cheese. Nah. <laughs> Nah, you disrupting the vibe and all that. You know that. what? Nah, it's too, it's too, that's too complicated. Man. That is not complicated. That adds that extra. <laughs> roll to the ball, roll like Reservoir <laughs> Dogs. Come I want on, the raw wings, on. man. <laughs> barbecue sauce, man. <sighs> all right, Barbecue fine. sauce. All right, well, while we cooking up in here, we're cooking with the forest frequencies of real creative energy. Yeah. Give me another joint on here. I see you got um, something with Busta. You got something with M. Give me yeah, which one we're playing. Eminem is good. That's a that's a good song. We just actually um shot the video um out in Detroit. We just finished the video for it. It's called Murder Graham Do. And um, you know, I think that's a good one because that's a song that's just about the MCing and the lyrics and mm-hmm. the rhyming and just rhyming to a beat and just you know having fun. You know what I'm saying? Like the real reason why we do it. You exactly. know what I mean? Exactly. It's to just. Because the only, re- only reason anybody really raps is just so their friends can say, oh, that's cool. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So me and me and M got busy on that joint. It's Y'all crazy. Y'all got busy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, let's take a listen. Yeah, Murder, Murder Graham, Graham Do. Yeah. No, no, I'm going to let you go ahead and introduce it. All right, Deja Vu, Murder Graham Do. Let's get to it, baby. Come on. You know what I mean? Bars. No question. <laughs> These is facts. These is facts. All right, LL Cool J's in the building. All right, so we played your new stuff. Give me a throwback jam that you love that's not your own song. I mean, it could be R and B, it could be hip hop. <laughs> she got me programming. Um, <laughs> that's right. Let's program you, you the show. You let's program the show. It. You know, let's program the show. And Come keep on, some, we're gonna get all all in here. Familiar classics. Um, let me see. Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, an R and B joint for you and your wife when y'all are sitting there. You setting the mood. Give me something. Uh, <laughs> Vanity Six. Nah, let me see. <laughs> um, let me see. Uh, 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 R and B joint. That I think would be crazy. Let's play Gotta Be Real. Got to be real, Cheryl Lynn? Cheryl Lynn. Got to be real. Yeah, yeah, let's play that. That's real throwback. That's a for Is real Is that throwback. too far back? No, no. Oh, okay. We, we right. can touch on everything. Oh, okay. I mean, I can okay. get down with some jazz, some right. look. Right. It, it, it's your world up in here. Because we could have played Entourage by Omarion, but that's like newer. So let's go with Got to be real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, we yeah. can do both. I mean, listen. <laughs> you know what I mean? You in here, it's a takeover. No question. LL's running the show. Okay, it's... The Deja Vu Show with yeah. WBLS. LL Cool J's been hanging out with us doing this mm-hmm. whole takeover, talking about everything. Yeah. LL, what do you do for your faith base? Because we always talk about things that are, you know keep us centered yeah. on the show. We, we talk about things that have taught us lessons. What about you for faith-based stuff? Do you have a zone out? Do you go to church? Do you yeah. pray? What, what is I it? I do it all. I, I go to church. Um, I pray, I meditate, and I control my thoughts during the day. Mm. You know what I'm saying? See, the the thing that's the part that people probably um, most people don't folk don't don't they miss on. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's controlling your thoughts throughout the day. You know what I'm saying? So like, where you trying to end up? What you trying to accomplish? And then keeping your mind right. You know what I'm saying? Well, like, like I think there's a verse that says whatever you know, whatever things are good, mm. beautiful, hopeful, love. Think, think on, on these things. things. Well, hey, so what about that? Yeah. See, that's where the discipline comes in. The discipline is not really waking up early and going to church, although that's part of it. And 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 you know, there's discipline in praying once, and there's even discipline in meditation consistently. But controlling your thoughts during the day mm. and and mood management, that's a whole nother level of discipline. It is. You get what I'm saying? Because there's so many different factors coming at you. There you go. There like you even go. just scrolling, you pick up the phone and you can be in a whole other zone, being mad, being triggered about whatever you see. Right. And when you you know, what you complain about, you attract. Yes. That's why you everything you hear people beefing about, they get more of that in their life. They've been complaining about the same thing for five years. Same old same. Yeah, because what you complain about, you attract. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like because you're giving that, you know, it's like that saying, you're giving it too much energy. Like, yes. this is real. You know what I mean? So I think 
you know, my, you know, mind control, your own mind. Yes. So what set you on that path to start thinking in that? Was that from brought up or did you expand it by reading some things or just life lessons in general? Uh, you know, I, you know, it's, it's, it starts with your, how your software is programmed when you're a little kid, right? My mother told me, she said, oh, Todd, you, you're a handsome boy, you're smart, you can do anything you put your mind to. And my grandmother said, if a task is once begun, never leave it till it's done, be thy labor great or small, do it well or not at all. Mm -hmm. So then you start applying that to your life, and as you see results, you start realizing that, you know, certain results come from certain actions, and you start putting two and two together. And then you, you 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 realize like, oh, okay, so I have to keep my mind in this place in order to make these particular things happen. You dig what I'm saying? Yes. Like, like, so like, you know, because if not, you you can either be a a boat powered through the water or you could be like a cork floating in the water. Both mm -hmm. of them are in the water. Mm -hmm. They both getting salt on them. They both dealing with the weather. But the difference is one has focus and knows where it's going. Yeah. You know, and one is just kind of, Free freestyling. Yeah. See, like most people in their lives, they kind of freestyle. Why? Because it's easier. Yes. And a lot of times they don't know they're doing it respectfully because that would be the real reason because a lot of times people don't realize that they're not controlling their thoughts. Mm -hmm. They just think when they think that's what they're thinking. You understand Come what I'm on, saying? Come on, LL. You know what I mean? Yes. Oh. I'm going to start calling you Deacon LL. Come Why on Why Deacon? Why can't I be a bishop or something? <laughs> okay, gotta... bishop? He might be <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what? I really think those kinds of things are what set you apart. We were talking behind the scenes, y'all, about people wanting to do interviews and how folks don't really know how to do it. LL is a pro. LL is a pro. But like also because what you were just saying, you put the effort in. You, you're controlling your thoughts. You're mindful of what you're doing. You got to want it. You know what I'm saying? You say you want things. People want the shine and the lights, though. They want Hollywood. Yeah, people want shine and lights. You know, they just don't want to um, risk getting close to the electricity to get it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, if you want the shine and the lights, the differences in life is you got to hook the wires up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you can have the shine and lights and mm -hmm. all that, but you got to be the one at the at the socket. And messing with the wires, buzz, yeah, just a little bit. And people are gonna tell you why you messing with the wires. Oh, you're gonna burn. You're gonna do this. You can't do this. You can't do that. And that. And then the, here's the here's the, the the weird thing about you can't do this and you can't do that. Sometimes they're right. Sometimes they're not right. But it's up to you to figure that out. Yeah. But but at the same time, just because they tell you you can't do this and they were right about that doesn't mean they're right about this. Right. So it's kind of like a lot of, you know. It's what a hell of a game. It could be true right now, but that does not mean that's the truth in, in, for eternity. In general. Right. Yes. Yeah. Come on. LL is bringing it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. um, we're, we're talking force. We're going through the album. Give me another song. I see you got a jam with Nas called Praise Him. Yeah, Praise Him is a good joint. Uh -huh. um, you know, and, and what we was talking about, because what I was talking about, I, I kind of dipped back into my, my early days when I first um was dabbling in, in, in the 5% lessons and learning a, a lot about that and mm -hmm, learning a lot mm -hmm. about myself and the godly nature and me. Knowledge and, then, and wisdom, yeah. Yeah, and then what Nas did was he kind of, he told a story about, you know, well, people will hear it, but how he got on a, when he first heard my songs, how he would take a, a trip over the farm is just to see where I lived, you know what I'm saying? Wow. And, like, it it, it kind of comes together in a really special way, and, that Queens I, yeah, connection. Yeah, no question. And Q tip being from Queens as well. Oh, yeah, so, that's right. so it it um it felt good. You know what I'm saying? And I think it's a vibe. Yeah, praise him was good. It's right. a crazy joint. It's crazy. on right now on the Let's Deja Vu show, WBLS, LL Cool J. Let's get it. You're rocking with LL Cool J Takeover on the Deja Vu show. Yeah. Now, LL, you touched on this earlier and you said something about merch. Why don't we value this, this, and that? <laughs> Um, <laughs> no, because I, I said you have on merch when it's your shirt, Rock the Bells, but yeah. Balenciaga, it's not. Right. All right, talk to us about your brand and the yeah. things that you are doing as you are hustling and expanding it. Well, you know, let me let me say first that all of this stuff I do is only an extension of hip-hop. And, like, like, I just want to start with the idea that I'm very comfortable being a rapper and an MC, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. I don't need you to – you don't have to say – oh, he does business in this area. I don't need to hide behind other businesses, investments, like like none of that. I like rapping. I just want to be clear about that because I feel like a lot of artists, for some reason now, we've, you see, what happened was the internet, they, with the internet came a democratization of access to making records, right? So the bar oh, tell me and about it. the standards <laughs> changed, right? 
So once those standards changed, it became so easy to do it that people don't necessarily put the same level of value on being an artist. Right. See, I'm not, you know, I don't do hip hop just because somebody threw a mic at me and I found a beat. Like I do it because I truly, truly love it and I'm honored to do it. So I love the art. That's why I could talk about it 40 years later. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not shying away from the fact it's year 40. Come on. You know what I mean? So it's like, it, but so so when I when I do rock the bells and I do this company, that's because of my love of hip hop and my love of being an MC and being a rapper. Like that's where that comes from. And when I do the, the Rock the Bells cruise and when I do the Rock the Bells festival and when we do the merch, you know, my son, you know, he does a lot of graphics and is involved with the, oh, so you know, it's a whether, family affair. Yeah, it, whether you call it merch when it's for the festival or when it's for the cruise or whether it's the brand when it's actually just a drop. Either way, mm -hmm. I caught that. You like that? <laughs> I like that. Either way, it feels good, you know what I'm saying, to support hip hop. And um, that was really the that was the really the thing. It's like you have what I did was I gave DJ Cool Herc equity in the company. I gave Salt and Pepper equity in the company, Run DMC, Big Daddy Kane, equity in the company. Um, like other people, equity in the company. Fab mm -hmm. Five Freddy has mm -hmm. equity in the company. I did that because I just want these artists to ha own a piece of something of great value. So now they're you know all business partners with you. Right, yeah. right. And, and and more importantly, they have equity in something that's of major value. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like that, and that to me was the beauty of it. But all of that starts with me being a rapper and Come me on. being an MC first and being an artist first and owning that first. You know what I'm saying? I'm not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for business. I'm in there because I'm an artist. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, so... I just want to be clear about that because I don't want the youngsters and the people that come behind me that are to feel like they have to pretend that they don't love what they love. Like you it's think all, they, but I think now though it's more of like you know no more, multiple it, streams of income and all uh, that. The multiple streams of income is fine. Yeah. It's nothing wrong. Oh, I monetize. I monetize my page. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> and oh, I got you know fifteen <laughs> streams. Yeah, we. I, I get it. I love all that. Yeah. I'm talking more of the mindset of. I can't say I'm an MC. I have to say I'm a business person because somehow being an MC is a minor thing. Like you have people out here that say, you'll hear a guy on the internet say something like, oh, I want to be a CEO. I want to have artists. I don't, homie, homie, do you, you, you obviously don't know what, a, uh, Michael Jackson's an artist, bro. Right. Stevie Wonder's an artist. Bob Marley's an artist. Miles Davis is an artist. Yes. Whitney Houston was an artist. What are you talking about? Like, this is not like, like just something you could just, going around collecting artists. Mm -hmm. Baby and them are supremely talented. But Lil Wayne is an artist. Drake is an artist. There's a reason. Nicki's an artist. Yeah. They have real artists. There's a reason why you build a company. So I'm just saying, like, to me, I don't like when I when I feel like people are devaluing the idea of being an MC or being a DJ, you know what I'm saying, or being a rapper. Like, that's a beautiful thing. Like, you were changing the world through your art. Yes. You know what I'm saying? May he rest in peace, Fat Man Scoop. He brought a lot of joy to a lot of people with those club records. Absolutely. Those records, we would walk in those clubs and hear those records and it was, you know, you know, I mean, it was important to us. Yes. So there's beauty in that. And so you don't have to um, show me, like I don't necessarily care what was in Marvin Gaye's bank account. You know what I'm saying? Yes. In order for me to respect Marvin Gaye. As an you know, being able to capture value is different. Like the Wright brothers, they didn't capture a lot of value in the airline industry. Mm -hmm. But you can't tell me they didn't make they a didn't contribution more, yes. and there wasn't value there. Right. You, you, you dig what I'm saying? I absolutely do. Yeah, so that's why, like, I'm I'm real funny about that. I'm real, I want to be clear about that. Because I feel like we have this tendency to want to hide behind business. If that's your passion, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't think I looked man. at it like that before, but that's yeah. interesting. That's yeah, interesting because take. a lot of people are doing that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know, I just, you know, I, oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, yo, you're 27. Oh, I'm going to retire next year. What are you talking about? <laughs> you ain't even did nothing, B. <laughs> you got three albums. You've been hot for eight years. You talking about, man, shut up. Man, go make some records, man. Get out of here, man. And let the legend speak, baby. What? On, All right, B. and on that, you know what? Let's we we gonna we gonna we gonna ridiculous. throw this back. <laughs> let's let's play let's play a bad on this one. Okay, All right, for let's real. do it. Let's do it. <laughs> LL, he's let's speaking. He's it. ready. He's do do do. Let's do it. Come on. That's a good one to play. Calling on, calling on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. He said he gonna crush you like a jelly bean. No question. What? No question.
<laughs> That's not lyric. All right, here we go. LL Cool J's in the building doing a takeover on this Deja Vu show with WBLS. Force is the new album, but you've been giving us all this knowledge about yeah. not just your album currently, but history, music, all of it. But take us back to where we are with Force. Give me another song that we need to premiere on the show. Um, A song that would be good to play off of the album. A song that I think is... um. I think it's real special, is uh, 30 Decembers. What is that one about? It's about the fact that I was away from New York. See, during the pandemic, when we like we talked about earlier, when yeah. I traveled around, I hadn't done that in years. So me going up and discovering that, you know, there's Metro cards and no tokens, I, I felt like an alien. <laughs> I felt like I was just getting out of jail. No, I'm keeping it real with you. I'm not lying to you. Like, yeah. I, you know, everything was different. There's no newspapers. P- people are looking at their phones and mm-hmm. computers and mm-hmm. it was just like a it, it was like coming home from sing sing yeah, you yeah. know what i'm saying it was like crazy to me so like when i when i walked around and when i traveled around the, the the city on the bus and i was in all the projects and i was moving around i got inspired to write a song so when i got the q-tips house that particular day he was messing with this track this real kind of ethereal sounding track and um i ended up writing 30 decembers to it and it's a song really about all the things that I encountered. It's all true. This particular song, some of my songs are fantasy. Sometimes they are hybrid. Yeah. Sometimes they're what I'd like to do. It all depends. This particular song is all facts. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Everything that happened in this particular song. And um, 30 Decembers is, um, I think it's a, it's a special song. Um, people got to check it out. Enough said. Yeah. What are some of the things you saw in there? You oh, man. I mean... Um, like I said, you know, the guy behind the dude behind the counter had a million dollar smile, but something tell me he gonna make the world pay for it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Wow! Like it's all kind of things. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, I, I said, you know, uh, I saw you know, um, girl playing music on the phone. Um, we we talked briefly. I could tell she hold her own energy in her eyes, make people stand aside. You know what I'm saying? Like different things. I said, there's um, I said this white lady looking funny, look funny because this black kid talking about dropping forty and twenty. Like, I'm watching this, these two mm-hmm. kids. Like, you on the subway. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm watching serving. these two kids, the two black kids talking about, yo, 40 points, 20 minutes. And I'm watching this lady. She looked like she's from a different part of town. She's making all these faces. I'm like, yo, look at this. This is crazy. This one lady, I'm all in black. I got anonymous, you know, mm-hmm. mask on. She don't want to let me sit down. Her stuff is right there. You know, it's just like, I said, don't want to let me sit down. I ain't dealing with that now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like all of the things that I talked about, and the record are there. It's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, but yeah. isn't it crazy though when when if you take off the mask and it's all oh L L. Oh yeah. Oh, how are you? I, oh, I yeah. love your song. Oh yeah. Are you songs. the man who ruined the buffet at the <laughs> Harrow Club this morning? <laughs> Is that him? Is that him? <laughs> all right, so L L, what are yeah. you looking like with um your movies and stuff? What are you working on now? I'm or focused on not, the album. Just the album? Yeah, I'm focused on the album. Like, mm-hmm. like, I got obviously you know, I get offers and I have things that, you know, people want me to do. And, you know, like, you know, you got a lot of people who want me to, you know, do different, like an Into Deep sequel and all this. And, you know, like a lot of Are things. Are you down for the sequels? Maybe. Possibly. Maybe. Get a little exclusive. You know exclusive. what I'm saying? Come Maybe. On. A little something. A little, <laughs> little possibly. Yeah, a little possibly, huh? <laughs> Impossible. Look, 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 get that check. <laughs> oh, you told my hair you got a little check. Yeah, well, that don't hurt. You know what I mean? You know, I ain't got, I ain't got no problem with some cash and all that. Right, But um, right. Yeah, it's, uh. Right now, I'm just focused on the album, though. That's really it. When you do your videos for the song, for the album, yeah. do you are you still telling the stories? Is it different now from like it used to be back then? Yes. What's the difference besides the budgets? Well, the, the budgets are different, but the difference is that, you know, there are not as many outlets that people focus on for video. Yes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, yeah, they're going to go to YouTube, but there are little, there are certain rules. Like, i give you an example. Like now, now my song "Proclivities" is is it, with Sweetie with is Sweetie. is is a bigger song than "Passion" in in my or or even the song with Rick Ross and Joe in mm-hmm. terms of how it's performing mm-hmm. outside. But at the same time, when it's sexy, the ads are different, so your views can be different. Like 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 you can get it, it, like views of there's a lot of stuff based around views that make things different. I just put it to you like that. You mean when you're um the, the digital ads that come before? What I'm the video saying play? is that what I'm saying is that on the internet, 
the subject matter has a lot to do with how much exposure it's going to get. Got you. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So so something could be doing a lot better than you think it's doing, mm -hmm. but the exposure is different mm. based on the algorithm and what ad buyers are willing to put money behind for records to you know get but out there. You know what I mean? Does that in turn shape the way you want to do your videos? No. No, 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 I'm not going to allow it to do that because I did that. And that, and that's not to say that anybody's doing anything wrong either. I'm not like trying to imply something nefarious. I'm just talking facts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But no, I think um, it used to do that to me because like, you know, when I first started, like a lot of guys, like, like a lot of people know me for my, my, my love songs and the songs with the females. But what they don't realize is I was making all types of hard records, but radio didn't play those records during those days. Yes. So so they think that, oh, LL's like Drake. LL ain't like Drake. Mm. He didn't make Rock the Bells and I'm Bad and Mama Said Knock You Out and all and Ill Bomb and Boom. And, like, you know what I'm saying? It's just not the same. However, because radio gravitated towards the more melodic records, I have more of a, I, I, I'm more well known for those kinds of songs. So what that does is it, it affected some of my records moving forward because we were looking for a path to success. So instead of picking the harder record as the single, we would pick the smoother record as the single. You know what I'm saying? You know, there's one right there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. We, it, that's facts. You know what I mean? So that, that kind of, you, you understand I what I'm do, saying? I do. But in that, but in Sort of, that's the same thing what the internet is doing because they're giving you this path to this other exposure to right, the song. Right, but it's kind of like the opposite, though, in a lot of ways. It depends on the, the type of song it is. Mm -hmm. It depends on the level of sexuality, too. Yeah. You know, because, you know, you know, on the internet, you know, you know, people get offended by, you know, if you write oxygen, somebody will write carbon monoxide. <laughs> you know, like, you know. Of course. Like, 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 these dudes, they get, you know what I mean? So... Okay. You know, you just gotta. What I'm, what I'm basically saying is, you have to just create from the heart and do what, which, what moves you, and it'll find its audience, and it finds that you find you go where the love is. Right. You know what I'm saying? All right. Well, the love is here, LL. No doubt. All right. So we played a throwback. Give me something new to play right now. Something new. Um, something new off the album. Let me passion? think. Passion. Did we have um, passion yet? We didn't play passion. No, we didn't. You All right. So that? we can play passion. All right. Let's do that. Let's get into passion. Let's get it. Force is the name of the album. LL Cool J's been hanging out with us. LL. I, I have fun with you because no, number one, you know how to talk. You run your mouth up in here, uh, but you drop some, you drop some, 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 some gems for us up in here. You no, know, something. That's a little something. That's what you do. Uh -huh. All right, Coolio. <laughs> um, we're in here. Frequencies of real creative energy. Where yeah. do we go next? I think. Um, I'm trying to think about the the, the track list. Okay, I have it here. I have um, name some song. Name them. Proclivities. We didn't play Proclivities. Want to play well, that one? Yeah, let's play Proclivities. So Proclivities. Um. The thing about proclivities that's fun is that it's what it's really about is a shadow world that a lot of people like to pretend doesn't exist, where where they really like to make their their, their sexual fantasies a reality. Mm -hmm. and, but they want to. They got two worlds they live in. They got a day world where you know they show up to the barbecue a certain way, of and then course. they got a they got a shadow world where they really like to do certain things a certain way, and so. The song is dipping into the shadow world. I of heard that. the lyrics, LL. Yeah. You dipping yeah. into some shadow world. Yeah, this is true. Mm -hmm. And so the procl and everybody has those proclivities. So yes. it was like I wanted to do. I wanted to make a song that like touched that. Okay, you know what I'm saying. And um, what made you team up with Sweetie? I just thought she would sound good. I like Best Friend with Hun Doja. I thought yes, it was that's good. A dope song. I thought it was a good song, yeah. and I thought her voice sounded good. So I was like, Yo, let's get it. You All know right. what I'm saying? Well, let's get it right now. Let's do proclivities it. is proclivities, on. baby. LL Cool J. No doubt. The force. Let's get it. It's the Deja Vu Show Takeover. LL Cool J's in the building with us here. WBLS, all that good stuff. LL, yeah. before you go, yeah. um, we're going to play some more music, one more song. All right. But I want you to give us some words of encouragement for somebody who might be down, somebody who might just have had some stuff going on. You already been dropping stuff, but give us a, a, a few more words. Well, it depends on the situation. Bishop LL. <laughs> you funny with that. <laughs> as long as they ain't Bishop from Juice. Um, <laughs> hanging off the roof right, and all that. Right, um, uh, I guess... Uh, I mean, it depends on what you... I would just encourage people to not give up mm -hmm. and um, to really decide what it is they want in life. Be, be, be tenacious about your vision and flexible in how you make it a, become a reality. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. you can... You, I like that. Yeah. Somebody, you Be tenacious about your vision yeah. and be flexible about how you make it a reality. Yeah. Because even though we yeah. wanted to go this way, that yeah. might not be the way that it's supposed to happen. Yeah, yeah, because like an airplane, yeah. when, when a, for a plane to fly from, let's say, New York to Hawaii or L.A. to Hawaii, it's a series of course corrections. Yes. For a... For, for, a rocket to get to the moon is a series of course corrections. So it may go this way, got to correct. Then you go this way, you got to correct. So in life, you're going to make mistakes. You might make a left turn, but just because you make the wrong left doesn't mean that you can't get it right and end up where you want to go. You know what I'm saying? And I think that we we apply that when we're going to the grocery store. We apply that when we're going to a friend's house for the first time, mm-hmm. but we don't necessarily apply that when it comes to our own goals. We give up as, as soon as we get lost. Right. As soon as we get out in the desert, as soon as it gets hot, as soon as the heat is turned all the way up, as soon as we start dealing with some adversity, you know what I'm saying, we give up. And you just got to kind of, you got to fight through it. And it's, uh, you know, one of the hardest things in the world to do is to not succumb to frustration when you are internally frustrated and outside pressures are frustrating you as well. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to really be strong. And strength is not about lifting weights. That's a different, that's physical strength. We're talking about internal strength. Right. You know what I'm saying? Intestinal fortitude. You dig? Come on, so LL. That's what I would say. But I man? tell you, when is this next motivational book coming out, sir? We, yeah. we gonna we, we gonna work yeah. on that. We yeah, gonna work yeah, on that. Yeah, yeah. I'm serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna get a Nobel for that. Come we'll on, figure it out. All right. We're we gonna, we gonna go get that Nobel we're for it. That, no, he, we're not just you know gonna what? do it. We and need I love the, Nobel. the way he always wants to go to the tippy top. He said Nobel. New York Times bestseller. Yeah, we did. I have one of them. I need the Nobel. I need the Nobel, man. You better do it. <laughs> All right, so wait, before you go, let's play the song from the album Force. Yeah, let's play the force. This song, um, actually, this is one of Q Tip's favorite, favorite songs, and and the song is just it's just a sonic landscape that he put together that's crazy. And, I, you know, I go from, you know, talking about Luther Vandross to Pop Smoke. You know, smooth as Luther Vandross down to St. Andrews. Shout on the yacht while we bopping the Pop Smoke. Somebody talk, call immigration. Tell immigration them cases is uh is um uh, is wardrobe. Mm. Succulent juices, we sip patrices in Bordeaux. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's a very interesting song about just life, going after it, going to get it, and being a force in your life. You know what I'm saying? So... There it is. There it is. Go get, get the it. album. The Force is out. Yeah. And here's the song on the Deja Vu Show with WBLS.